Yo, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Now, obviously, UFC 304 was last night, and there was a lot of interesting things that went down. We're first going to start off with Arnold Allen versus Giga Chikotse. Look, I think this fight was extremely close, too close for comfort for Arnold Allen. I think that Arnold Allen did not, you know, uh, pretty much have the smartest game plan, you know, trying to strike with Giga Chikotse and almost lost the fight. Let's go ahead and be freaking honest. Arnold Allen almost freaking lost this goddamn fight. I thought that Arnold Allen should have done some smarter things like go in for some takedowns, try to get some grappling and, you know, try to wrestle with Giga Chikaze. And he obviously didn't do any of that, which was a complete surprise to me because I thought that Arnold Allen was just going to use, you know, the fact that he has grappling in his game to try to take down Giga Chikaze and secure, you know, rounds. But my opinion and i'm just being completely freaking honest i think giga chikatse won rounds number one and two if i'm just being completely freaking honest you know i was kind of a little bit surprised that giga chikatse didn't get his hands raised at the end of the fight now i did pick arnold allen to win this matchup and i'm just gonna be completely freaking honest man um i am very very surprised that arnold allen did not have a smarter game plan against a guy that Pretty much everybody in the MMA community knew that was not, you know, uh, really too keen on defending takedowns. That's Giga Chikatse. For those of you guys that don't know, when Giga Chikatse gets taken down, ladies and gentlemen, it's almost like he's in a completely freaking different world. He doesn't know what to do, right? We've seen him get taken down multiple freaking times and just accepts the position. And that's what I thought Arnold Allen was going to do, right? And in my opinion... It was extremely freaking close. We got the uh, the prediction right, but Arnold Allen had a freaking terrible game plan. And even though he won, you know, it was way too close for comfort. You know, GG's though. GG's Arnold Allen. We move on to Christian Leroy Duncan versus Gregory Rodriguez. And let me just say this, ladies and gentlemen, I think Christian Leroy Duncan is the perfect example of what not to be in this day and age as an MMA fighter because Christian Leroy Duncan is only good at one particular thing and that is striking. We did see Christian Leroy Duncan engage in a lot of the striking last night against Gregory Rodriguez and you know he was trying to go in for some clinches but literally 10 seconds later he would get reversed by Gregory Rodriguez who in my opinion was sticking his face out a lot but yet Christian Leroy Duncan was not able to find his chin pretty much at all. You know, Gregory Rodriguez went in for a lot of takedowns, which was the smart thing to do. You know, he got like eight minutes of control time against Christian Leroy Duncan. And pretty much it was just rinse, wash, repeat all the way from rounds one to rounds three. You know, Christian Leroy Duncan had some openings, but literally did nothing uh, with them. And uh, yeah, that was a crazy performance. We had Christian Leroy Duncan, you know, winning this fight. I predicted that he would, but he got completely freaking rolled. We move on to Bobby Green versus Patty Pimblet, and I'm not going to call him King Green because I'm just going to go ahead and get confused the entire video, so I'm just going to go ahead and call him Bobby. So, uh, in my opinion, I thought that we were going to see a whole lot more striking in this fight. This fight ended its submission in round number one by Patty Pimblet, but let's just be honest, I thought that we were going to see, you know, 10 times more striking than what we saw. You know, uh, I thought that Patty Pimblet, even though he is not as skilled as Bobby Green in the striking, that he would definitely pose a legitimate threat because he is the bigger, the taller, the stronger guy. And uh, I thought that he was going to at least be competitive in the, in the striking and let's just be honest he was you know and bobby green you know uh i don't know what he was thinking i honestly do not know what he was thinking going and shooting in for a takedown against patty pimblet patty pimblet literally easily defended that and submitted him like 20 seconds later but uh yeah ggs for patty pimblet that was an extremely great win for him you know uh getting a win in front of the crowd in front of his crowd in front of his people was something it, it was it was good to watch man that put a, a really big smile on my face you know even though i am a big you know bobby green fan i really do appreciate the fact that he is a really really good striker seeing patty pimley get a win like that in front of his people you know and uh i, I i'm happy for the guy if i'm just being completely honest uh, but ggs for patty pimblet we move on to the co-main event which is tom aspinall versus curtis blades and this fight is really interesting not really much to say here other than the fact that we know how tom aspinall fights he has a very very dangerous and reckless entry game against you know pretty much everybody that he fights but it works out very very well for him even though he does have a lot of interesting decision making 
you know and he is a very very reckless guy in terms of the striking it works out pretty damn well you know curtis blades in my opinion should have been the offensive counter puncher right we knew that tom aspinall was going to try to come in with some crazy freaking entry and curtis blades should have just taken the fundamental step back and try to counter on tom aspinall's game but instead what we saw was the complete opposite because curtis blades was landing shots against tom aspinall Tom Aspinall then takes a step back and then catches Curtis Blades, knocking him down. And Tom Aspinall gets on top of him and pretty much just lands eight or like 10 unanswered shots on Curtis Blades and pretty much just ends the fight. There's a lot of people saying that, you know, the fight ended a little bit too early. But in my opinion, I feel like the, the, the stoppage was correct. I mean, let's just be honest, man. Um, Tom Aspinall was literally landing a lot of punches to Curtis Blades and Curtis Blades was just pretty much covering up. The fight was over, ladies and gentlemen. There should be no debate on you know curtis blades getting a bad you know stoppage because that's just ridiculous tom aspinall literally sat him down got on top of him landed punches that went unanswered and unfortunately curtis blades you know made a bad decision that costed him the fight um we're probably gonna see tom aspinall fight john jones within the next two years ladies and gentlemen first we got to see john jones take on stipe miotic who knows why right i don't need i don't even know why stipe miotic gets that fight but that's the fight we're gonna see john jones versus stipe whoever wins that fight is probably gonna fight tom aspinall no whoever wins that fight is gonna fight tom aspinall and honestly i cannot wait to see that because tom aspinall defending an intern belt is just freaking embarrassing for the ufc the ufc should have never done that in the first place the fight to make was the intern was it, it the fight was, that they were supposed to make was the intern versus the actual champion you know but whatever uh let let john jones have his little uh legacy fight and after that he definitely needs to fight tom aspinall respectfully you know he definitely does need to match up against him and that's gonna be a huge event for the ufc without a doubt honestly cannot wait to see it let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments we move on to the main event between Leon Edwards and Bilal Muhammad. Let me just be completely freaking honest, man. What a tough moment it must be for Leon Edwards to lose in his crowd to his people at 6 o'clock in the freaking morning against Bilal Muhammad. Props to Bilal Muhammad, man. He went in there and fought his fight. You know, even though it is a freaking boring ass, you know, fighting style. It is what it is. It's MMA at the end of the day. You know, grappling and wrestling are part of the game. And uh, yeah, Bilal Muhammad was able to win four out of the five rounds against Leon Edwards. Almost, although I must say that Leon Edwards almost won uh, the fight at literally the last minute of the fifth round, landing some pretty crazy elbows on Bilal Muhammad. I feel like if, sh if he should have had that same sense of urgency throughout the entire freaking rounds, we probably would have had a different outcome. But uh, yeah, Bilal Muhammad fought a very, very smart fight, even though, you know, he's, his fighting style is boring as hell. Nobody's going to freaking be excited to watch him defend his belt ever. You know, uh, he fought a very, very smart fight, you know, and for Leon Edwards, I don't know what's next for him, man, because he has a lot of tough matchups in front of him. If he wants to, you know, be a champion once again, I don't think that Bilal Muhammad is going to be, you know, champion for a while, if I'm just being completely honest. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments, you know, uh, UFC 304 surprise, 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 right? We're going to make, be, we're going to be making another video about what Dana White said, you know, uh, in the post fight press conference, because, you know, obviously the UFC are not big fans of grapplers. They are not big fans of people who like to go to decision, you know, or, you know, that type of fighting style. And we are going to be making a video about all of that. But uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. As always, it is a pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. Peace out and have a good one.